My name is Jason Forrest, and I am a Christian. And uh, last night, I was contemplating a few things. As I got done reading my scripture um, for the day, I kind of dove into my Bible school reading, uh, a text that I have been reading, one of them. Um, it just kind of hit me when you are evangelizing and you need to talk to people um, about Jesus. You kind of have to know your business, right? Like I've seen God move in my life. I've seen God move in other people's lives. When sometimes God moves, that it's kind of hard to put it into words or they need further explanation. They're trying to figure out what to tell someone when you're trying to talk to someone about Jesus. When you have a problem and you're trying to resolve a problem, how do you resolve it? So there are questions before you can realize that there's an answer. There is the who, what, when, where, why, and how. This is where I'll begin. The who is probably the most profound. You see, a skeptic would say, um, I think you're nuts. Um, an atheist would probably say, you know, I think you've been brainwashed, man. There are so many people walking around not even realizing. More like they don't want to realize, because if they begin to question his existence, they would actually have to start thinking that he could be real. That it's, it's just too much for people to consider now. Like they won't let it happen. They won't let their brain go there. Most people would just rather act like he doesn't exist. On the rare occasion, they might curse him for something that's going on in their life. Or they might ask for some divine intervention and then and make a whole bunch of empty promises that they're not going to keep. Because it's so much easier to live in the world when you don't have him at the forefront of your mind. The who, if you haven't already figured it out, is Jesus Christ. The what. The what is next. That's something that can be felt. It's something that can be held. It's in everyone. It's in all of us. It's all part of his purpose. It's completely simple and also one of the hardest complexities to understand while we're here on earth living this life. We are stingy with it, but at the same time, we throw it around and it loses its worth in our hearts. Its worth is limitless, but we don't recognize it. And it gets confused with lust a whole lot. The what is love. Some of us don't realize that the love that pours out of us is the love of Jesus Christ. You actually think that the love you feel for someone else, your children, your family, your friends, you think that you created that love, that it came from you. Well, it didn't come from you, but it's come through you. It's part of who we are. However, when we don't have him in our life, meaning Jesus, we don't recognize his potential. Next, you have the win. Well, that confounds some people. It's in reference to always or, or never ending. He loves us every day of our life. His love surrounds us every moment of every day. You see, you don't get to pick when you feel his love. Sure, it's great to feel a father's love when, you know, when you've fallen and he picks you up and he pats you on the back. He tells you it's gonna be okay, he kisses your forehead or when you get an ice cream at the end of the week um, because you've got done great at school. However, it's the same father that will scold you for doing something you're not supposed to do. It's the same father who will take away one of your luxuries for a short time so you can understand the consequences of your decisions. And it's the same father who can permanently take away those luxuries from you. The next is where. Some of us don't even realize, but he's instilled himself in us. Some people are like, right, sure, Jesus and us. There's some scripture that, that tells the story of when the disciples had to wake up Jesus because they were on a boat and there was this crazy storm going on and they were kind of freaking out. And so Jesus wakes up and he speaks a calm over the storm. And indeed, the storm does calm. He put himself into everyone and everything he created. And we, as human beings, were made in his image. Why? Hmm, why? Why do we do the things we do for our children? You love them, even though they make you angry sometimes. You want them to succeed. That's why he died on the cross for you. The fall of man took some of our God-given abilities away. God knew 
He needed a way to help us out. He, we had to have a hand that we could grab onto. So he came down on his Jesus. And he died for us so that we may ask for his forgiveness so that we have a chance at repentance. So the last but not least, uh, you have the how. He's an almighty God, but this one factor, this one question, you have more control over um, than you might think. Because, okay, so you decided you're going to let him in. Well, how does that work? How do you let Jesus into your life? When Jesus knocks on your front door, he is not looking to hang out on the front porch. I, I have news. Um, he's looking to come in. He wants a full tour of your home. He wants to see all of your closets. He wants to open up every single one of them. He wants to know what your storage room looks like. He wants to see inside all of your drawers. He wants to see in the drawers in your bedroom. He wants to see the drawers in your kitchen. There's nothing that he does not want to see. Some people have, you know, oh, there's like one or two rooms, or there's a basement. Oh, yeah, we don't go down there. No, he wants to see it. He wants to know what is going on in your life. He wants to know what's going on in your home. He wants to know what's going on in your marriage. He wants to see this. So once you've let him into your life and you've kind of exposed everything, you feel a little bit better. He is not done yet. He is looking to do some renovating and he's looking to do some redecorating. Those walls that you built, you had great intentions, but he's about ready to knock a couple down. He likes an open floor plan. Uh, also, he's probably gonna add a couple windows. You see, Jesus loves natural light and he's kind of handy to have around. You know, he was a carpenter. You don't get to pick how you feel his love. There will be growing pains, it's to be expected, but know that whatever happens while you're following him, while you're praying to him, while you're trying to walk with him, that he loves you. And though it might hurt, because what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. There's nothing you're gonna hide from him. There's no one thing that you're gonna keep from him. He knows everything. He does want you to talk about it. Jesus can forgive you for all of your sins. You have to ask for forgiveness before he can go there, before he can help you, before he can start working in your life. God's calling you. He's calling you home. God bless.